All right, let's start. So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, so basically, right, this will be a very casual sharing. It won't be a webinar. So anytime any of you have um, anything to add, any questions to ask, feel free to just speak out uh, via your the chat box or just unmute yourself and speak up, okay? So this will be very uh, casual. It won't be like lecture or webinar. All right, so today's topic that we'll be sharing on will be, of course, career opportunities in blockchain. And who are we and what's blockchain? So basically, we are a group of crypto and blockchain enthusiasts working in the industry. And through all these sharing sessions, right, we want to introduce the wonders of crypto, wonders of blockchain to everyone here via education and sharing sessions like this. We are also currently running some blockchain classes with NTUC Learning Hub. And if you are interested to learn more, right, you can check out the website at theblockschool.com. So we have three courses running right now, which is blockchain for capital markets, blockchain for cross-border payments, and blockchain for corporate compliance. So if you haven't attended any of it and you're interested, you can sign up via NTUC. Just like how blockchain and Bitcoin is very community driven, right? Um, the topic we selected today is also driven by the community. So if you are in our Telegram group, you have noticed that we had a voting going on previously on the subjects that you are interested to learn about. And that's how we kind of derived today's topic, which is um, blockchain job opportunities in Singapore. So the other two hot topic, right, is intro to Bitcoin and Ethereum and also um, introduction to decentralized finance. So if we get more interest and demand in the future, we will potentially do a sharing on the other topics. And here's what we'll be sharing tonight. Basically, why you should consider a career in crypto and blockchain. What are companies looking for? tips to make your job application stand out, and also a list of job portals you can take note of. Today, we will also be running a live lottery where you will have the chance to win 20 USDT. So USDT just means USD Tether, which means um, a USD that is on blockchain. So it's packed one to one to USDT, a uh, US dollar. And then lastly, we will have an open floor discussion where you can uh, share more on your experience or if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask us as well. And before we begin, right, um, I'll run a quick poll just to understand better uh, what are you looking for, what industry you are currently look, uh, working at so that we can understand your needs better. So I've just opened the polls so you can key in the industry you are in, what is your job role, and why are you here? It's like we have a very diverse bunch of, of audience today. Yeah. All right, so 15 of you have keyed in your answer. So I'll just end the polling and share the results. So don't worry, all this is anonymous. So uh, we won't know who you are when you vote for this. So today we kind of have quite a diverse bunch as Thaddeus has mentioned and uh, we have most of you being others so I'm not too sure which industry you are from but we also have people from banking, uh, retail, student and the job role we also have a very varied bunch. Very interesting we have everyone here like everyone in different industries here as well and also very importantly why are you here? So curious to know what are the opportunities in blockchain, which is very good because this is what we'll be sharing today. 
and of course want to see how we can make more money right so uh, later we also share a bit on the pay skill some of the pay skill you can expect for joining crypto and blockchain industry but please note this is a disclaimer that anything we share today is not financial advice and it's not definite facts so please do your own research and do note that this is just a sharing and it's more of our opinion it's not really like 100% uh, true okay all right very good so thanks for sharing the results and then we'll just and why a career in crypto and blockchain because this is a very young industry and no one is actually an expert yeah anyone know here know when was bitcoin invented which year was Bitcoin invented? Peter 208, you are right. So actually Bitcoin right, and blockchain technology is very, very new and it's a very emerging technology. So it's less than 12 years old, which means that most of us here are older than crypto older than blockchain which means that no one is an expert which is good because potentially you could be the next expert you could be the next um, industry leader so the thing is that because this is a very young uh, very new industry it means that everyone has a same playing ground same level so there isn't any like really um, experienced person in this industry and of course the second factor is that blockchain is in an emerging and high growth sector and we have a very proactive government and proactive support from the different agencies like MAS and IMDA. For example, for um, the blockchain causes, right, uh, we are funded by IBF training allowance grant, meaning that you are literally paid to learn about blockchain. So this is really awesome and really something that we should uh, take opportunity of. And lastly, uh, with blockchain, right, you will be at the forefront of innovation because this space is constantly evolving. Every day we have new use cases, we have new projects and initiatives springing up. Like for example, uh, in recent news, we have DBS. So DBS actually announced that um, they are going to start a crypto exchange. So this is very big news, especially because DBS is one of the oldest and one of the most well-known bank uh, in Singapore as well. And here are some very interesting stats from AngelList. So AngelList is a US startup job portal. So AngelList states that, right, um, a lot of jobs that are tagged as remote friendly are blockchain companies, are by blockchain companies. So uh, the, the fact is that for blockchain related company, right, the workforce is very distributed. It's kind of also very decentralized, just like the technology itself. And why is it so? It's, it's because Typically, blockchain companies, they don't just hire from one country. They hire from different regions, different countries. Also, because of regulations as well, they want to ensure that they, are, they have people spread all around the world um, in case of regulatory issue in the future. And also, this is the nature of how this industry works. It is very, very community-based. So if you are very you are very keen to work from home, work up in a remote job, then blockchain is a very uh, good sector that you can look at. And here's like some jobs by primary role. And majority of these jobs, right, 61% here is developer jo jobs, meaning engineers or this. So if you are a com computer developer, you are into coding, then this is a good industry to join. But also if you are non-technical, um, around 40% of blockchain jobs are non-technical as well. So basically anyone and everyone can actually um, have an opportunity to join this industry. And in the last one, right, the last um, screenshot you see, it's um, a stat of non-technical roles by primary role. As you can see here, right, operations is the highest, followed by design, business, sales, marketing, management, and content. So basically, every role is wanted and needed in this industry. And in Singapore itself, we have over 200 blockchain related companies. And all these are spread out in different application, different areas like services, decentralized finance, financial services, smart cities, protocol infrastructure. 
So the job opportunities are abound. And if you're interested in any area, right, you can actually take a closer look at all this. All right, um, now I'll hand over the time to Dennis. So Dennis will share more about what are some roles that companies are looking out for. Hi all, good evening. Um, my name is Dennis and I currently work at Novum Alpha, a cryptocurrency asset management firm. Okay, now I haven't been in blockchain very long. Whatever Yunhan has said is true. Um, blockchain is quite a new topic. It's quite a new industry. I mean, Bitcoin white paper was just written 12 years ago, right? So uh, that, that being said, there's really not a lot of edge that anyone else can have over you. So if you wanted to start a, a, a career in this firm, a career in this field, it's actually not very difficult. Now, uh, in my career, I've been a general manager at a cryptocurrency exchange. I've been a business development director at another exchange. No, no, it's not. This is. Uh... I'm the head of uh, product at my current firm. So we, we interview a lot of people all the time. We're, we're looking for talent all the time. We're interviewing people all the time. And uh, it, it puts me in a position where I get to see the people that we would like to recruit for technical roles as well as non-technical roles. Okay. Now I can't really speak much for the technical side because that's not where my background is in. What are you doing? Um, but sorry, can, can whoever is speaking mute the mic, please? Um, okay. So while I while I do interview with lots of people for different types of roles, technical or non-technical, it puts me in a position to to know what exactly the firm is looking for. So I, I'm not personally from a technical background. I didn't study uh, programming or anything like that. My background is in accountancy. Okay, so I'm already on the business side. I, looking at my education, you know I'm on the business side of things already. But when it comes to technical roles, I mean, like programmers, like, like Yun Han has pointed out, 60% of the jobs, they go straight away to, to developers. In fact, because blockchain is so new, blockchain is growing so fast, like uh, everyone's really looking to build the product, right? And if you want to build a product, you need to have that basic technical knowledge, how to code, how to write programs, how to look for bugs, things like that, all right? Even... Ethereum, like the, the, the main uh, um, careers in Ethereum right now are in development, right? Uh, the people who are more technically inclined, you would be looking at things like uh, programming in Solidity language. Now, Solidity, for some of you, that might be very new, but those of you with programming backgrounds, um, Solidity is influenced by C++. So if you already know that, you have a leg up, right? I mean, uh, when it comes to technical roles, it's a lot of, it's... Very high barriers to entry, right? You need to study this. You need to have experience uh, coding, the mathematical logic of solving problems. But once it gets to a certain point where you can solve problems, the language doesn't matter anymore. So whether it's Solidity, whether it's C++, it really doesn't matter anymore, right? Once you, all programming is all about solving problems with logic, okay? Uh, this is where you'll see, if you were to go on LinkedIn, if you were to go on different cryptocurrency projects, websites, you would actually see the, the things they're looking for are all like full stack engineers, full stack developers, front end, uh, UI, UX developers. These are the people that build the product that people will eventually use. Those are the people that are very important. They're the backbone of any uh, uh, cryptocurrency project at this stage in time. Okay, so if you already have a computing background, computer science, something like that, you are in high demand. In fact, uh, this, is, this is something that has been true for the last five years or so. Okay, I don't think it's going to slow down. In fact, I think it's going to keep picking up. Okay, so for blockchain developers, uh, we were talking about this. Language might be a, a, language is just a tool. Language is just a tool for you to solve problems. If you can have the logic to solve problems, all you have to do is just turn to, to switch a language and you'll be fine. Okay, that's my personal opinion. Um, where I'm from at Novum Alpha, we outsource a lot of our programming work to India or Vietnam. So you can see this is a language that, uh, this is a very transferable skill. If you can pick up coding, you can move in the blockchain really easily. Now I suspect uh, most of you are here from non-technical uh, backgrounds, as we can see from the survey earlier. Uh, most of you were in, in banking and financial services. Uh, some of you in retail, um, tourism, I think, from, from what I saw just now. So non-technical roles is probably what you're looking for. Okay, and this is something that you will still find there's lots of opportunity in. Non-technical roles, they include things like sales, include things like HR, marketing, community management. Things that, you know, you, if, you're great, if you're great at talking to computers, then you find the technical roles. If you're great at talking to people, if you're great at making people do things, then you do non-technical roles. Okay, there, there are considerably fewer barriers to entry. 
Um, for example, if you were to do a, a course like finance, if you studied business, you studied marketing, you can switch from whatever industry in the crypto. I mean, the, 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 the appetite for talent is quite huge. Okay, super high in demand. Uh, those of you in banking and financial services, cryptocurrency exchanges, they are looking for experienced finance people all the time. Um, whether it's to price up um, structured products, whether it's to do um, growth packing or customer acquisition, things like that, your past experience would matter a lot, would be very useful here. Okay, I mean like some of the cryptocurrency exchanges, right? They say, oh, we need like three to five years experience. Even if you're not on blockchain, three to five years experience in some other financial services role. So that's something that you could look at, okay? And uh, for mid to high level positions, if you have experience in, let's say, uh, um, if you're a head of some other department in traditional finance, that'd be great. If you have spearheaded the expansion of a, of a team into some new region, that's perfect. If you're a compliance officer somewhere else, it's probably easy to switch over and find and uh, satisfy some of the compliance requirements in the current cryptocurrency and blockchain space. I mean, especially with the MAS requirements nowadays, compliance is a huge, huge uh, uh, area in demand of uh, talent. Some, something you could look at in, in terms of non-technical roles. Okay. All right. Um, next. So let's let's talk. Uh, so the second most in demand um, uh, lesson that you guys wanted today was how to make money, right? I mean, nobody, nobody is gonna, nobody, nobody's gonna fault you for saying, that, hey, I just wanna pay the bills and make some money, right? So let's talk about pay scale. This is always a sensitive topic. You usually don't wanna go into an interviewer, uh, interview room and ask this, right? I mean, it's uh, interview etiquette that you, you kind of wanna save to like probably the third or fourth round. But when it comes to gauging your expectations of how much money can be made, let's talk about pay scale today, okay? so. Um, typically, your pay will be packed to previous jobs because cryptocurrency and blockchain is such a new space. So unless you are headhunted in specifically to fill a, a certain role, uh, most of the time, your previous career would be a great gauge for what your pay, your pay scale potential could be. Uh, give or take 20%. I mean, you know, switching, switching jobs, you know, you always tend to ask for around 20% more or something like that, right? So that's possible. Um, not to say that's a, a, a hard and fast rule. Like when I switched over to crypto, I took a pay cut. I willingly took a pay cut because this was something I, I believe that the growth potential was way higher anyway, right? So when I switched over, I took a pay cut, but within a couple of, of years, maybe two years or so, your salary should readjust to where you were previously before, even if you took a pay cut, okay? So not too difficult, uh, especially because I came from a previous asset management firm as well. So when I switched over from whatever I was doing previously in a traditional financial industry to crypto, I had to take a pay cut, right? But as long as you're proving your worth, as long as you are earning your keep, your salary should readjust back to where it was before pretty quickly, right? Because there are not many people in crypto at this point in time, which means talent is very scarce, demand is very high. You will be able to uh, make a decent amount of money, okay? Um, so what is a decent amount of money? For non-technical roles, your pay scale will be similar to banking. So if you're looking at um, junior careers, maybe you're looking at uh, entry level, I would, say, I would say 40 to 50 grand a year should be quite achievable. Okay, I mean, that, that's, that's, very, that's very standard for, for uh, banking, right? I mean, 40 to 50 grand a year will be three to 4K. I mean, like, it's, it's very standard. Uh, it, it would... It would improve pretty quickly. Uh, if you're looking at, let's say mid-career, maybe you are, maybe you are mid-career in, in crypto, you should probably be making at least 70 or 80 uh, a year. Okay, I mean, that's just me speaking from my personal experience. Later on in the open session, if you guys feel like you wanna ask a little bit more, uh, our other panelists will be, will be more than happy to share their perspective, okay? One other distinction that you might wanna make, one other distinction would be the, would be where your, where your company is actually from. Um, if you're looking at US companies, those companies, they are very well funded by VCs, right? And if they're well funded by VCs, your paycheck will tend to be higher as well because they want to attract the best talent. If your company is from China, then uh, your pay scale will be very different as well because their working culture is very different. 
what I've personally seen is that you will find salaries from the US firms higher than salaries from Chinese firms. If you're looking at Singapore firms, Singapore startups, then the salary is very competitive, uh, very comparable to what you find other Singaporeans making. Okay, so that is something that you have to look at as well. Uh, apart from technical or non-technical, apart from experience, you also have to look at what region your, your company is, is from. Okay, so whether it's the US, whether it's China, whether it's Singapore, uh, it tends, to, it tends to, to produce a pattern, okay? Now, as for technical roles, your pay scales will be similar to startup developers uh, because they are building the mobile app, they are, they are building the uh, user interface, they're building up the, the, the logic of your smart contracts. So that will be quite a high paying job. I would say if you were looking at 100, 100 grand a year to 140 grand a year, that's very uh, in line with industry standards, okay? Um, in fact, if you were an early coder, you'd probably be offered equity as well. Take it, if that's the case. If you know what you're doing and you think there's potential, take it. Make sure you ask for equity. Okay, equity, uh, for some of you who are not aware of what that means, it means ask for, ask for shares, ask for ownership in the company, ask for ownership in a startup. Because when they get bought out, you want to make sure that you are in there for the ride as well. Okay. Um, so for some crypto and blockchain companies, what is good, what is thematically aligned with the whole idea of crypto is that if you can choose to have a portion of your pay in cryptocurrencies, I mean, you can't be working in a blockchain firm and then they don't, they don't even offer to pay your salary in uh, crypto, right? I mean, the whole idea of working in crypto is because you can see the benefit of this uh, uh, instrument and you want more of it, right? So make sure if you can negotiate, uh, ask for some of your pay in, in cryptocurrency, because let's say we're in a bull market now and you're and your pay package includes Ether or Bitcoin. That would be something that would be in your contract. And if, if Ether or Bitcoin is up 10 times, you would still be, being, you'd still be paid uh, monthly in that amount of Ether. Okay, that's, so that's something that you can consider. It's all down to your negotiation skills. All right. Uh, last point on this page, bonuses are typically given in cryptocurrencies. So for example, when I was uh, doing business development, uh, my bonus would be in cryptocurrency and that is something that is desirable for some of you because that doesn't actually show up on your, on your tax, uh, on your income, All right? So a little hack for life, uh, you're probably making 20-30% of your paycheck and that is not taxable, right? Because it's an instrument that was given off, the, off your CPF and off your banking records, okay? So uh, take a look at this graph. This is the median salary for jobs in, at, uh, in between crypto and non-crypto companies. Okay, right now, um, the, blue, the blue one signifies cryptocurrencies that is generally tends to be higher than uh, red because of the economics of the labor market, right? We are trying to attract talent. Talent is, in, is a huge shortage of talent. We need people willing to, to cross the gap and take some risk and join cryptocurrency and blockchain jobs they have no choice but to adjust the pay higher, right? So that is a, a good gauge of what uh, the current situation in, in, in the labor market is, okay? All right, next. Uh, let's talk about how to make your job application stand out. Okay, so I, I, I tell this to some of our uh, students who have come through NTUC Learning Hubs courses and I see the number of you today, uh, welcome back. Uh, this, the thing about applying for jobs in cryptocurrency, okay? Like if, if, I, if I didn't look up, if I didn't surf Facebook, if I didn't look at Mothership, if I didn't read the news, if I didn't listen to any of our budget speeches from our, from our parliament, I would think that the economy is booming. Okay, I would think that the economy is booming uh, because all day long, you're getting people um, writing messages to you in LinkedIn, asking you whether you're interested in this job, whether you want to kind of move over to this company. And I would think like, wow, you know, like it must be a very rosy time in the world, but the reality is far from it. Right. So if you want to take a risk and move into blockchain because you can see that really, okay, well, you're convinced, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, vacancies in this sector and you want to send in your application. This is what uh, I think you should do. Personally, as somebody who has vetted CVs in three different companies, I'm trying to like place people in my, in my positions. Uh, what you need to do when, you come, when it comes to your job application is you have to be bold. Okay. Don't, don't, don't create generic applications and just send them out 
because if, if you are sending the same application out to, to blockchain as you were to uh, um, um, uh, a marketing role or a, a standard um, startup role, it's not going to stand out. It's just going to be a very cookie cutter, copycat kind of application. So make it unique, right? Um, this, these uh, job portals are not a great way for you to gauge how, how much effort you should put into your job application. They're, they're there to make it easy for you. Right? But if you think that it's going to be so easy to get a job, you should think again because you have to make yourself stand out. And if you're going to take the easy way out, your CV, I guarantee you, will not be the one that stands out. And your CV doesn't stand out. I mean, the CV has only one role. The CV has only one role and that role is to lend you an interview. So if your CV can't even lend you an interview, you've, you've, you've wasted your time. Right? So make sure you get that sorted out. Um, take a look at this screenshot over here. One... One, one vacancy here, senior project manager. One, one application here, sorry, one vacancy here has 300 applicants. Okay, that's the amount of competition that you're going up against. If yours doesn't stand out in three seconds flat, I can guarantee you it's going to the bin, right? Not only because we're mean or anything, it's, it's really going to the bin because it's not standing out. Um, some other applicant who has put in a little bit more effort into writing up his CV, that will stand out already. Okay. Uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to applying for these jobs, just like blockchain, skip the middleman, right? You, you, you've been through all our lessons. You've heard us talk about the intermediaries and all that middleman with the delays and the fees and all that, right? So forget all about all that, right? You forget about the, the HR guys, forget about, the, uh, um, forget about the, the job portals. LinkedIn allows you to connect directly with the people that you want to connect to. You want to talk to the CEO? Sure, go ahead. You want to talk to the... Uh, uh, HR people or the senior directors of HR, sure, go ahead, right? You can send it there. It's LinkedIn, you know? Uh, the one thing that I, I believe blockchain has an edge for you over traditional finance is that the people in blockchain tend to be millennials, okay? It's, 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 a, it's a fact that tend to be millennials, mid-30 uh, people in, the, in senior positions, maybe early 40s in senior positions. Uh, these are the people who are very used to communication on the go, right? So, a lot of that formality, a lot of that procedural kind of uh, red tape, uh, we're not fans of those, which means that if you would have sent in applications through a telegram, I would still possibly consider it. Okay, so you don't always have to wait for vacancies. Vacancies just hint to you, a company is hiring, but not only specifically for that role. Uh, companies are always growing, startups are always growing, uh, startups are always churning uh, people as well. People who don't make the cut, they, they leave very quickly as well which means vacancies are always there, you know? So sometimes these startups, they don't even have someone dedicated to writing up vacancies on LinkedIn all the time. So if you were to send in your, your, your CV or ask, you know, just open your mouth and ask, right? What's, what's, the, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, you would be surprised at where this could take you. All right. Um, one other thing was uh, networking. Uh, one other thing that was very useful was networking. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen too soon, uh, anytime soon. Maybe next year, maybe next year with phase three, maybe we'll start to see small scale net networkings and meetups again. Those are also great chances for you to, to meet people and stand out. After a while, you start to see, hey man, this sector is really small. Um, go to the same networking, you go to different networking sessions, you see the same few faces always. That's a good sign, right? You're starting to become recognizable, okay? Okay, next. Now, um, what you are, as, as people who are mid-career, and I think some of you here are uh, early and mid-career people, your advantage is that you have work experience elsewhere. We are not coming in completely bare, right? You're not coming in with no experience and saying, hey, I want this kind of pay. That's not true. You actually have something to show for yourself for the last three or four years as what achievements you have under your belt. Uh, make sure you use those. Those of you who are from other, other industries such as legal, right? Make sure you emphasize that because we are, we are hungry for compliance people all the time. If you have a previous experience in sales, you are top sales in whatever <laughs> other, other product that you are uh, uh, previously working at, make sure we know that, right? Because if you can see that, you know, like sales, uh, branding, these kinds of things are transferable skills. If you can find success in one niche, you probably can find success again. It's the same formula, right? So leverage on your existing skill sets uh, make sure you highlight your certifications and qualifications that show that you are somebody that's fit for the job, 
So those of you who have your certificates from NTUC Learning Hub, use those, right? Use those. We, we, saw, a screen, we saw a screen cap right here. Uh, somebody has mentioned under their courses that they've ever taken, they included blockchain for corporate compliance, blockchain for cross-border payments, in a sea of people without formal blockchain education. This already makes you stand out, right? I mean, tell me which university could you go to now and say, I want to learn an uh, uh, undergrad degree in blockchain. Not many. So the fact is that if you could actually certify, uh, get yourself certified or exhibit some proactiveness in your behavior or on your part, that you went out to get yourself an education in blockchain, that already makes your CV stand out. So do that, okay? Um, I mean, like compared to where I was, like, like uh, three years ago, I started in, in, this, in this industry. There was no such thing as a, as a blockchain course. Everything that you learn on blockchain is, everything that I learned on blockchain, I don't know, I can't speak for other people, but everything I learned from blockchain was through listening to podcasts, reading Reddit, watching YouTube, posting, posting in Facebook groups and asking questions. That was an informal education, right? The fact is now you have structured education, structured education that is subsidized by the Singapore government. Why not use it? Okay. All right, uh, next. Here are some job portals you can take note of. Okay, a, a lot of them that you will notice are uh, Telegram groups. So Crypto SG Jobs, the first one. Telegram groups are a great way to connect with people directly because you can see mutually what other groups are they already in with you. And if you can see that they are an admin of some other group, you know, you, you, you're finding and navigating your way around the scene, uh, which is known for its digital nature, right? It's a digital scene, so why not just go ahead and use that? Apart from that, there are lots of other portals like SFA, crypto careers, uh, crypto jobs, like just go ahead and look at all that. My personal favorite is, all right, can we stop that? Uh, can we mute that please? Um, okay, so my personal favorite is LinkedIn. Uh, I use this a lot, not just for headhunting, but because you are reading industry-specific news on it, you're reading developers' uh, updates on it, you are following projects' updates, um, especially when it comes to the corporate spin of things or the business side of things. So get on LinkedIn. You need to know where the people that you want to speak to hang out. So get on LinkedIn. They will be able to connect you with the right departments if you were to ask nicely. Uh, and LinkedIn, right, as compared to Facebook, as compared to Instagram, LinkedIn, the people there are already, they already have, uh, their minds are already framed to have career discussions, to have business discussions. So get on LinkedIn, that, that's my personal favorite. Apart from that, um, Job Street, eh, Job Street is, is uh, more, and more, more and more blockchain jobs are getting on, on the mainstream portals and my career future SG. So take a, note, uh, take a look at uh, all these. Uh, if you can, or if you're interested, we can still communicate in the Telegram groups so that uh, we can speak more directly about it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dennis. So now we'll just uh, share a bit about how we got into the crypto and the blockchain industry. So personally for me, right, um, actually, I first got interested in crypto and blockchain when I was surfing the net. Like sometimes I browse Reddit, I browse some tech website, and I see cryptocurrency. Of course, at that time, it was three, four years ago. So um, Ethereum price was very low, like two digits. So when I read about cryptocurrency, I thought it sounded very interesting because it's tech plus finance. It's not just about money because there's a tech element there. So personally, I'm interested in startups, entrepreneurship, and technology. So that caught my interest. And I decided to buy some cryptocurrency just to keep like Ethereum. So as you all know, once you buy something, right, once you make an investment, you will keep checking the price. So that's what I did. So when I first bought Ethereum, it was two digits. And then in the next few months, it jumped to three digits. Then I was like, what's happening here. And that's what, where I got deeper into the rabbit hole, where I got to like really uh, dive deep. I went to read more about what is Ethereum, what is Bitcoin, because uh, if you are not familiar with this industry, right, you will just think this is a scam industry. Like you see a lot of people getting scammed. There's a lot of like people trying to just make money out of it. But when you really read more about it, you go and uh, learn more about the underlying technology, what is blockchain technology, what does Ethereum wants to do, then you will realize, right, actually this industry is very interesting and it's a bit geeky as well. So if you like geeky stuff, you will like it here. Yeah, so um, after this foray into the blockchain space, right, um, learning about it, then 
um, I started to look out for job opportunities. And at that time, I was early in my career. I was just working around one and a half year in a public relations agency. So I was a bit bored there because uh, personally, I like to work in startups and I like a, an unstructured environment where I can do a lot of things. So uh, one day I saw um, a job listing on Tech in Asia, which is a Huobi global job listing. So Huobi is one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchange in China. And at that time, uh, two, three years ago, they were trying to hire in Singapore because there was some regulatory uncertainty in China. And that's why they had to move their headquarters to Singapore. So I applied for the job in Tech in Asia. And of course, like all the cold job applications that I do, right, I got no reply, like zero reply. But I was really quite interested to jump industry at that time because um, I was really interested to learn more about crypto. So what I did was I went to LinkedIn. I did my usual stalking. So I went to Stock Copy Global and then I saw the CEO profile on LinkedIn. That's where I... Uh, left him a private message just to say, hi, I'm interested. This is my CV. Um, please contact me if there are suitable opportunities. And that's where like, the CEO actually forwarded my application to HR directly on LinkedIn. And that's how I got my first job in cryptocurrency. So basically the takeaway here is that if you really want to stand out, right, please do not co-apply because every freaking application in the market out there, there's at least 50 applicants. So how do you stand out, especially if you're early career, especially if you just have maybe one or two years of experience, it's very hard to stand out. So you need to find other ways, like instead of um, applying through the middleman, you go straight to the source. Even better, if you go to events, you find this founder, you see your favorite project founder, go and talk to him, uh, go and like ask him out for coffee and then just ask if there's opportunities in his company. Yep. So um, since then, right, um, I have been in three crypto and blockchain related company. Another thing to note is that um, this scene moves very fast and you need to be able to deal with ambiguity. Yeah. So if you're someone who likes stable job, you like a stable job, stable income, right? Uh, maybe for blockchain and crypto now, it's still very young. So maybe it may not be for you because if you join a blockchain startup, especially sometimes like it may randomly decide to move out of Singapore or they want to relocate somewhere because of regulatory uncertainty. Then if you if you have a family in Singapore, would you move or would you like switch job? So the thing is that for now, especially if you apply for startups jobs in crypto, you need to thrive and be happy in ambiguity and uncertainty. Yeah, because this industry is very new. But with this, of course, high risk and high rewards. So if you are in here, you don't mind a bit of risk. You can also see a lot of rewards, especially if this project gives you equity in this space. Yeah, so to sum it up, I think um, this industry is very, very exciting, very interesting, very new, but you also need to really do your research, whether you really want to come and jump in because this is still very young. Yeah, this is a very young industry. All right, Kirby, would you like to share next? Yeah, hi. Hi guys, uh, Kirby here. So uh, for me, I got into the space around me 2017. Yeah, but at first I dismissed crypto as a joke, you know, like how can a digital coin be valuable? So I totally ignored it for six months. <laughs> and at the time I saw Bitcoin at 3K, I came back, I saw it at 9K, I was like, um, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so I went to actually do some research and dig up into it. So that's when I really, as they say, go in, I went into the rabbit hole. And I realized that uh, there was a lot of potential and um, a lot of uh, use cases that we can use with uh, Bitcoin and crypto as a whole and to really positively impact like society. So it's not just uh, for investment, but I really think it can uh, elevate us uh, as a society. So uh, how I found a job in crypto, it's a very random thing. I, I, I felt like I was really lucky. So I was actually volunteering um, as an English teacher in Cambodia. And at that time, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I was like online, like maybe half the time. And I started to look for something I could do online uh, to work part-time. So that was when I started to research uh, a project that I really liked. And then I joined the Telegram channel. 
So what happened was they needed someone to uh, manage the community uh, in the Asian time zone. So I reached out and I applied. And what, what, uh, what, what this means is that I manage communities on Telegram, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all that sort of stuff for, for crypto projects. Yeah, and as Dennis shared, you know, skip the middleman. For me, I find a project I'm interested in and that I really like. I, I will reach out straight to the CEO or the CMO, someone that has the power to make decisions and then reach out to them for a position. Even if the position is not available, I'll reach out and I'll say, hey, I think you need this um, so that we can take your project further and so that you can have exposure in the Asian market. And that's really how I landed most of my jobs. And until now, I've never met any of the team in real life. Uh, so for the past three years, I've been working with over 25, maybe 30 now, 30 plus projects, freelance, community management. I've never met the team at all. Um, and it, because they are mostly based in the US or Europe. Yeah. And then you would ask, what about the pay? How do I get paid? So as Dennis shared, I, I get paid 100% uh, in crypto uh, and non-taxable. So I have not paid tax since 2017. Uh, <laughs> uh, non-taxable. And oh, but the bad side is I do not have uh, CPF. So uh, yeah, then from there, I also worked, started to work with a Singaporean VC, uh, venture capital focused on crypto, and I helped them to analyze new projects and new uh, investment, uh, yeah, new investment opportunities in different blockchain projects. Uh, and also I, I, met, I started to hit their communities. So it started from a community management job and then doing, working for VC, and yeah, even being sent to uh, Ethereum conference in Osaka, uh, just to represent like the project, uh, since the company could not make it there. And I, I just say, I just want to say that, you know, experience is important, but if you don't have experience, just start from somewhere, just do whatever you can to learn, improve and grow. Yeah. And I just, I'm just really blessed that I could have worked from home or anywhere I wanted to. Uh, since 2017, really, and currently I'm with a derivatives exchange in Singapore, uh, and I'm also helping them with community management, marketing, and then on the other side, I'm ad advising another project uh, on the community aspect. And in my spare time, I'm learning coding because I think uh, this is a very essential skill that we need for our future. Yeah, and with that, um. Pass the time to Dennis. Okay, thanks, Kirby. Um, probably don't want to go on a record telling everybody you haven't paid tax in a couple of years. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, that is one perk, right? There's definitely, admittedly, one perk. Uh, I think I, I've, I've, I mean, I, I've already spoken a lot about how you should get a job in there, in this space. But I think one, one thing I want to share is this space can actually be quite fun as well. Uh, last year, I mean, before all this COVID nonsense happened, last year, I, I traveled very frequently. Uh, some of you probably enjoy traveling as well for work. Uh, I mean, like, it, it, crypto will take you to really random places. Crypto will take you all across the world to the craziest places. For example, the first time, um, my, my first time going to Russia was last year. My first time going to, to South America, Uruguay, was uh, last year. Uh, I went to Malta a couple of times, San Francisco. All this is because of cryptocurrency conferences. All these industry conferences are actually where you meet a lot of people, uh, where you meet a lot of international clients so that you can build relationships and then they can hopefully pay you, all right? Uh, in fact, I actually bumped into Sean, uh, who's about to share next in Russia, right? So can you imagine that two random Singaporeans, they just find their way like, hey, you're from Singapore and like uh, we're, we're now in Moscow and like we're gonna do this conference thing. So. It, it does bring you to really crazy places. Uh, it's a great side of crypto. And that, that um, borderless kind of networking that happens will actually take your career to give, a, give your career a life of its own. Okay, so um, because of the business context that I met in those overseas trips, 
uh, they, they turn out to be very useful down the line as well because either they refer clients to you or they turn into paying clients themselves or they can help you solve problems together or you know, co-found another project together up to you, right? So these are some of the great perks that you can get out of cryptocurrency uh, and blockchain careers. If you do enjoy traveling, that is a great upside. Supposing that uh, all this COVID stuff clears up, maybe you'll see in 2022, as all this pent up demand for travel all over again, could be quite exciting. So that's something that you want to consider if you are thinking about this career, all right? I've shared enough, so I'm going to let Sean go ahead and speak up uh, the rest of the time. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, as what they shared, uh, this is a very interesting job. You get a lot of traveling, uh, especially when you are a frontline uh, runner, whether it's in a sales role, business development, or even marketing role. You get to attend a lot of seminars, conferences, and this is when, well, the perks come in, right? Uh, exotic countries like uh, Russia, Moscow, I think it's not somewhere that people would plan to go, but uh, it's one of the largest market in terms of uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. They are very vibrant market there. So uh, every year, at least there's two or three such kind of uh, large scale blockchain conferences. Well, for me, how do I get into this industry? Actually, it's by, uh, by chance. It's very random. Uh, Yun Han was my ex colleague back then. So she, I think she joined one day earlier than me back in Huobi Global. So how I got into this company is, uh, Actually, I got a friend who had an interview with this company and said, hey, I heard this company, uh, but it sounds very dodgy and scammy. So would you mind helping me do a due diligence? So, which I did. And I saw some roles that looks pretty interesting and applied. So within the span of a few days, I received a call and they asked me down for an interview. I said, okay, why not? Check it out, right? So when I got to the office, there's only about two or three people. Really look very scammy. The office is very quiet, very scary. But I say, uh, since I got nothing to lose, why not? find out more. So, and that's how I got started there in Huopi for uh, a year before moving on to my second exchange. So, uh, in fact, being in a startup, uh, the fun part is there is no restriction on what you can or you can't. There's no rules typically. So, uh, you are free to you know, uh, play for creativity, how you want to grow the business and what you want to do. They are very open to you know, relocate you to different parts of the business units whereby you can uh, exhibit your, your talent. So yeah, I think that's all I have to share. So shall I pass the, to Tedis? Tedis, do you want to share? And we also have Ian here, so maybe Tedis and then Ian. Uh, okay, sure, I'll, I'll share a little bit about Maybe you my, can share your interest myself. in crypto as well. Yeah, yeah. and what you're so, doing, yeah. Sure, so unlike everyone here, I'm, I'm actually not um, directly in the space. Uh, unlike the panel, I'm not I'm not directly working in, in in blockchain or in crypto at the moment. You know, so in, in some ways I'm very similar to everyone else here. You know, I'm, I'm really interested in the space and I do see a lot of potential. Um, you know, to, especially you know um, with um, career prospects, um, also part of my interest as well. So I just wanted to thank everyone for for sharing everything so far. I think it's been really useful. Um, in some ways, I. My, my journey into crypto and to blockchain has been very similar to Yunhan and Kirby as well. So uh, I started off as an investor as well. Back in 2017, you know, I, when everybody was talking about Bitcoin, similarly, also I, to, I told myself, hey, you know, I, I should buy some, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a millionaire soon, why not? But then, you know, um, in a blink of an eye, you know, everything crashed and I, you know, I find myself 50, 60% down on my, my investment. So I, I told myself, you know, you don't you know nothing about bitcoin why are you holding so much bitcoin so you know that was a wake-up call to really um decide you know do you want to hold this bitcoin and if yes then you better make sure you understand what bitcoin is all about what crypto is all about so that's why i spent the whole of 2019 um you know learning about bitcoin um, what it is the future of bitcoin the future of blockchain uh, and, and all the possibilities that there is you know um from where we are today. And, and I started seeing this huge, tremendous growth potential, um, not only in Bitcoin, um, but in you know, the entire blockchain technology as infrastructure and, and the infrastructure and the space behind it, which led me to buy more and more Bitcoin. And you know, soon I found myself I'm deep, growing deeper and deeper into the space. Um, so much that I have also started a passion project on my own. So I started a website um, also to, to share about 
my knowledge um, investing in Bitcoin, caught everything about Bitcoin. So I think uh, it's through this website uh, that I've started to gain a bit of exposure. Um, to, and I, I've known more people in the industry now, like how I know Yun Han, I know Dennis and Sean today as well. So I, I think that my experience also tells me and shows me how open and how friendly everyone in this community is. Um, as long as you have the interest, you know, and you want to learn about it, there are so much resources available out there. There are so many people you can talk to, so many ways to actually get in this industry and, you know, and, and just be a part of this tremendous growth potential. Yeah, so I, I do want to thank everyone and, you know, and, and hopefully this works out for everyone together. Yeah, thanks, Yunan. Yeah, thanks, Thaddeus. And just to share a very interesting, like how we all got together was that we weren't working in the same company. We just happened to like, uh, previously I was working in a startup called Sparrow. So uh, we are an options trading platform and we have a Telegram group. So I was moderating the Telegram group and Thaddeus just happened to be inside. And he saw his friend in the Telegram group. So that's how we got connected via Telegram. And that's how... Um, from Tedius, I got to know Kirby because Kirby was Tedius' friend. So basically this industry is super small and quite young. So everyone is very friendly, very open and very open to share and learn together. So I would say um, the crypto and blockchain industry is one of the most friendly industry I've ever been compared to like the more traditional industry where people are more serious yeah so this is one of the perks of the industry as well as most people are young but it doesn't mean that only young people can join as well because it just means that um, our mentality is very open because if you believe in bitcoin blockchain all this right you kind of have an alternative view of what is money how money works anyway so I would say that the people in this industry, we are just like have kind of a different mindset from the rest because we are very open to emerging technology like blockchain and Bitcoin. Yeah, so maybe we can get Ian, Ian to share next. Sure. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. <clears throat> um, so yeah, just to introduce myself, name is Ian as what <laughs> Yunhan has mentioned. Um, and then... Currently, so I do work in a blockchain company called Merkle Science, where we do blockchain transaction monitoring. So it's a compliance company um, that focuses on analyzing blockchain transactions for anti-money laundering purposes, right? So I do want to echo what Yunhan and um, Dadia said, you know, the blockchain community is very, very welcoming, very open. I think the technology being so new, right? A lot of these companies are just starting out. They're exploring new ideas. And when you're exploring new ideas, you oftentimes want to bounce it off other people to see whether or not it's feasible, to see whether there might be areas to collaborate, right? So definitely one of the things that attracted me to the space was the openness that the community have in terms of sharing and helping one another. In terms of my personal forage into the space, so before entering into the blockchain space, working for Merkle Science, I was actually a lawyer, right? And I think, you know, when I was practicing law and I was just hearing about blockchain, oftentimes people will come to me and say, hey, have you heard about blockchain? I heard there's this new thing called smart contract that's going to make lawyers obsolete. Are you scared of losing your job? And I'm like, I just entered into the legal space and I'm already at risk of losing my job. What is this new technology, right? So I spend more time learning about smart contracts and then from there learning about blockchain. And the more I learned about it, you know, the more interested I got in terms of, you know, its potential. Right, because really as a way of storing data in the world that we live in today, data is so important. Everything from owning property to even proving who we are, our identity can all be tied back to data. So I wanted to get into the space and unfortunately the firm that I was working in then had a very traditional mindset. So the partners in my firm refused to get into blockchain. They said, you know, what is this thing? It's a scam, it's high risk. And recognizing that my firm didn't want to make that move, I had to make a choice of either, you know, finding a blockchain company to work for myself um, or just quitting my job. Lah. So, <laughs> so I started going to a lot of events, spoke to a lot of um, people in the space, was really attracted to what these projects were doing. And then finally, you know, I had the opportunity to come across the founders of Merkle Science. Um, I thought what they were doing were interesting. And honestly, you know, the way that I got a job with them was just through interacting with them, helping them out part-time on the side. And then finally, they offered me a job, right? So a lot of people, you know, when I teach courses for blockchain, they ask me, what is the skill set that you need for blockchain? And I always say, 
you don't need anything special, right? Definitely having knowledge about blockchain helps, but it's not necessary, right? Depending on the role that you want to get in the company, be it marketing, sales, those are the expert, core expertise that you need. Having blockchain knowledge just helps you in the role, but it's definitely something that you can pick up along the way. So don't be um, intimidated, right? If you don't know anything about blockchain, doesn't mean that you can't get a job in the space. What people want to see is your enthusiasm, your interest in what they're doing. And then of course, you know, it being so new, everybody can learn together, right? So that's, you know, my personal take on it. And yeah, happy to share more with anybody else who would like to reach out. All right. Thanks, Ian. So um, anyway, right, uh, one more person I would like to ask is Ola Deli. Are you there? So actually, Ola Deli, he's from Nigeria. And how I got connected with him was through um, Fiverr, where I was looking for help in community management, content writing. So it's very interesting because like blockchain, it's so distributed and decentralized, right? The people working on this, uh, in this industry, in this startup, um, you can also outsource. You can also work with people of very different nationality. Like, so I would like to invite Ola Delhi to also share his experience in blockchain and crypto. And if you have any advice to share for the rest looking for a career in this space as well. Okay, um, thanks for the advice, let me see. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so it first started in 2017 when someone told me to write, to, to work with him on a white paper. And as I then, I never heard of blockchain technology. I've always heard of Bitcoin. Everybody knows Bitcoin. Uh, there's money in Bitcoin and stuff like that. But that was the first time I actually had experience um, reading white papers. So I had to go through a lot of white papers and uh, I got a bit of understanding about it. Then I attended a conference from my university in another state in Nigeria about blockchain technology. There were a number of people there. So that made me start with blockchain technology. So for a long while, I actually did not work. I was always digesting literature, reading a uh, lot about blockchain technology. But eventually, I have settled for writing. But I look forward to entering um, to doing legal compliance because I study law. So I look forward to legal compliance. But the thing about blockchain technology, as I've noticed, is that it is one of the most flexible um, to enter. What people, what people require to, um, the experience most people need is the experience they have in previous job roles. And they can easily pick up blockchain knowledge along the way because it actually evolves. Someone who knows about blockchain, who knew about blockchain technology last year and has not read about it since last year, we might almost be on the same level with someone who starts Today, yeah, so that's just it. So it's not always too late to join, to start, and um, your previous experience can always be migrated to blockchain technology rules. Thank you. Thanks, Ola Dele, for the sharing. Yeah, so very interesting because you can see like blockchain is across border. Like there's so many uh, different countries, different nationalities working very keen to join this space, work in this space. So basically, we are a very open, open industry that is very embracing of um, everyone. And I would just want to highlight also, right, for all our sharings here, we are coming from the non-technical view, meaning that all our roles here are more uh, related to business development, marketing, project management, community management. So we don't really have, uh, today we don't really have someone from the technical side to share. But in the future, uh, if we do have some, um, people who are in this space that would like to share, then we will definitely let you guys know as well. Yeah, so thanks for all the sharing. Anyone else from the blockchain industry here that is uh, and want to share, please feel free to do so as well. Nobody? All right, then uh, we'll move on to the next section, which is lottery time. So basically for this lottery, right, we just want to use this chance to also educate you a bit about blockchain and crypto. So for this lottery, we will actually um, do a transfer via, via MetaMask, which, which is an extension that helps you to transfer to the blockchain directly. So instead of transferring cryptocurrency from 
centralized exchange to another centralized exchange, right? After the during the lottery, Tedius will actually guide you through how you can transfer cryptocurrency from your own wallet to another wallet directly on a blockchain. So it's quite interesting. And I would like to invite Tedius. Tedius, you can take over and share the lottery now. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Shinhan. Um, so can you let me share my screen? So, sure. um, so we'll start off with the, the drawing of the names. So there's going to be one lucky winner tonight. Um, so I'll share my screen. So to, to have qualified for the lucky draw first, you, you will need to have um, left your, your Ethereum wallet, um, your, your wallet details with us. Um, could we, are you able to see the screen? Sorry. Yes. Can everyone see the screen? Okay. Yeah. So you, you need to, to have left um, your, your name and your wallet uh, information in this Google, um, when you're signing up for the webinar. So we have received about 17 uh, responses so far. But another thing is that um, I think we have decided that only um audience members present in the webinar today will be able to win so um in the event that we draw someone who is not present in the webinar today then we'll we'll redraw the name um so now we can present the winner live um on, on on the sharing today okay so um we're gonna randomly pick a name i'm gonna use a random name picker here and uh, place the names in okay and good luck everyone Elton Fu. Okay, so do we have Elton, Elton here with us today? Elton, so if you're here, say something or leave a yes or, or say something in the chat. So if Elton is not here, then unfortunately for Elton, so I, I don't think Elton is here, right? I don't see his name in the participants. Okay, so we'll, we'll, go, we'll go again. I'll pick another name. Ellen Lee, I think Ellen is here. I saw as an Ellen in the chat. So Ellen, is this you and your wallet address? Yeah, I'm here. I... All right, congrats, Ellen. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so congrats, Ellen. Um, so right now, uh, you're the winner of the $20 uh, USDT. So $20 USDT is exactly $20 US. Um, so um, that's, that's the thing about USDT. It's, it's a stable coin pack to the US dollar. So I have I have some USDT on my hands now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to live I'll do a live demonstration on how the transaction and how a typical transaction of the blockchain uh, is performed. So you know one thing about blockchain uh, and one thing unique about blockchains is that it's truly um, global and borderless. So you know if I'm sending it to you or if I'm sending it to anyone even in Mexico or in, in Antarctica, you know it's exactly the same process, exactly the same fees. You know so that's the magic about blockchain takes exactly the same amount of time as well. Um, rather, if you were to, if I were to send, trying to send an $20 to, if I were trying to send $20 to someone in Mexico now, it would probably cost me $500 or $200 or something. So that's crazy, right? So that is, you see, you can see a main advantage of blockchain. So what I'm going to use is an application called uh, MetaMask. So basically, I have a wallet um, as well that is built into my, um, that is built into my laptop. Um, into my computer, but it's also protected by a, a private key, which only I have access to. So, you know, you can see that I, I do have a couple of other digital currencies as well. You know, it does host Ethereum, it does host Tether, um, which is what I will be sending you. So Bitcoin is not here exactly because, you know, that's quite technical, but it's on a different blockchain. Um, so I'm going to send you um, $20 worth of USDT now. Okay. So, Alan, back to your address, Alan here. So, when you're sending someone um, um, a money or a transaction on the blockchain, so, you know, as because, because the, the wallet names are always very long, so never ever type it by hand. You may as well always make sure that you just copy and paste it, um, just the wallet details itself. So, copy and paste, I'm going to copy and paste your wallet details um, under USDT and send it to you. So this is your address here. I'm going to send USDT, uh, 20 USDT, okay? There is something here that I can send, um, I can even customize the transaction speed as well. So this is something that is a unique feature of um, Ethereum at the moment. Uh, if it's a high priority transaction, for example, I can actually pay a higher transaction fee, also called a gas fee, um, that actually prioritizes my transaction. Um, it moves it right next to the 
to the next block. Um, and when someone, when, when the Ethereum miners are actually mining it, the, the next transaction that we process is mine. So actually prioritizing it. Um, but for the, but you can see that there is a substantial premium that you have to be paying if, if you want to prioritizing, if you want to be prioritizing your transaction fees. So I'm, I'm just going to go with an average transaction fee. Um, click next and send it also. So it, it does cost about one ninety four, which is um, quite high at the moment, right? So $1.95, it's quite a high amount to be sending uh, $20. But as you know, this is still early days um, in, in crypto. While the technology the infrastructure is there, um, some there may still be some scalability issues, you know, but you know, um, it, it's going to be a lot faster and a lot cheaper to send transactions in the future. It's, it's kind of like using the internet back in... Uh, the 1980s, 1990s. It takes you one day or a few hours to send an email. Right now, it's like an, an instant, and an email is just a sort of, of a finger away. So, Alan, um, in a few moments, you should receive this 20 USDT. So, um, do look out in your wallet address that you have provided. You should see this 20 USDT appearing um, pretty soon. So, if you don't receive it, drop me a message and I'll, I'll check to see what went wrong. But, you know, quite high certainty that um, the way we've done it, keying in the transaction fees, the transaction wallet correctly, paying the gas fees, uh, I'm pretty sure that there's quite a low margin for error. You can see the transaction has already gone through. So you should see the money appearing and um, the, your, your, your lottery money appearing on your site very soon. You can see the money has been de deducted from my site as well. Maybe we uh, can go ether scan just to okay. show how it's so transparent. Like you can literally view the transaction, whether it's confirmed, whether it's sent to the other person's wallet already. Yeah. Yep. Good idea. So clicking on a transaction, you can go to Etherscan. So Etherscan is a way to access the blockchain. You can see exactly um, all the details about your transaction, where, where it has been, the amount of fees you have paid, um, the contract that has been sent to as well. Um, so in this case, you can see there's been a success. You can see in, 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 in certain cases where you, you will see it's pending or it's stuck, for example, you know exactly the status of your transaction. Yeah. So it's quite cool because Every transaction on the, um, on the Ethereum blockchain is sort of um, accessible on the scan. Okay, so I think congrats again, Alan, and um, enjoy the $20. Yeah, thanks. Just to let you know that I, I received it actually. You received it already? Oh, awesome. So fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, thanks, Thaddeus, for the sharing, and congrats, Alan.